What's going on guys? Jeff with the Motor Mindset Channel here. We are back for part two of our 1969 Yamaha project. We got some parts in the mail, so hopefully we can get it back together and take it for a ride. We got our float bowl gaskets in the mail here. This is what I've been waiting on to get these carbs back together. Hopefully we got the right ones. Let's take a look. Mm. Here we go. Cool. We got them. Carbs are all back together. I'm going to see what we can do about getting these filters cleaned out a little bit. Because they look pretty nasty in there. I've got a K&N filter cleaning kit around here somewhere. I'm going to maybe see if that'll bring them back to life a little bit. We've got our air filters soaking right now on some cleaner. Next up, I'm going to tackle this rear brake. So I'm going to have to pull this cable off. There's a pin that goes through and a cotter key on the other side. Looks like it might be kind of tricky to get to, but I'm going to try to see if I can pull that out. Clean that up. Maybe we can get that broken free. And rinse and repeat. We're going to try to lube it and get it to gravity feed all the way down. Hopefully run out this side. Where is it? Right there. And then once we're all done with that, we'll lube all our pivot points and get it adjusted. So I'm getting ready to put our brake back together, our rear brake cable. I notice our brake has a lot of play in it before we start to grab. So I'm sure the shoes are pretty worn out, but what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna re-index our arm on here to take up some of that slack. So our adjustment's just about bottomed out. So I'm going to pull this bolt out and then pop the arm off and twist it so we take up some of that preload. And then we'll uh, hopefully be in better shape. I tried to re-index that arm and it didn't like that. The brakes kept binding up whenever you hit the pedal, they wouldn't release. So I put it back to where it was. We'll see if we can get some more adjustment on the other end of the cable here. Yeah, it looks like we've got about three quarters of an inch left, so we'll back that out a little bit because I just don't like I don't like how much travel there is in the pedal there. So hopefully we can take some of that up. That rear brake is still sticking sometimes, so I think I am going to have to pull this wheel off and clean up all the pivot points on the brake shoes and the linkages and everything. I don't really want to do that right now, so I think we're going to pop our carbs back on. And then see if we can run it a little bit, see what it sounds like. Since the tank is off and it's not very full, I think we're going to pull this bowl off here. There should be a filter or some kind of screen inside there just to see what it looks like. Glad I did that. Look at all the crap that's sitting in there. Not so much in the bottom of the bowl there, but just all that junk. We're going to try to get that cleaned out here. I think it's about time to put our tank back on and give it a couple kicks, see what it sounds like. Tank is on, fuel lines are hooked up, crossover line is hooked up. I'd say let's give it some fuel here and see if we have any leaks. Looks good so far. Hopefully our needles and seats are seating properly find out here pretty quick if they're not. There's an overflow that comes out the bottom of each carb where if the bowl fills up too high all the excess fuel just drains out that overflow. Should have happened by now. So I think we're okay. Maybe we'll give it some choke and give her a couple kicks. The left hand kickstarter's funky. So I guess we'll see. Kick some tools out of the way. Left foot maybe. Good. 
Pedaling a little low, we might want to bring that up. Yeah, we're going to want to bump that idle up a little bit. But, it's alive anyway. Idle screws are here. And on the other side, I'll just crank them in. I'll probably go one full turn in. Just because when you reach inside, when you feel in there, you can kind of get a feel for how far up those slides are supposed to sit when it's at idle and they're they're just about sitting all the way down so we'll bump it up and we'll give it another shot here It's the next day. We got the bike all buttoned back up. We got our seat on. We got our tank bolted down. We have our little pod filters oiled and put back on there. Clutch covers on. It is pouring rain, but I think we're going to go for a little ride just to see what it needs, uh, what kind of tuning we need to do. I'm going to dump some fresh premix in it and fire it up, get it warmed up here. So I'm not sure what's going on there. We're going to have to pull our carbs back apart and clean them. I haven't done a compression check on this engine yet. That might not be a bad idea just to see where we're sitting. 
When I kick it over, it feels pretty close on both sides. It feels like it's got good compression. Enough to run anyway. It seems like we are running on both. It's just very, very boggy. So I think we're going to have to pull these carbs back apart. See what's going on. it worse I don't know if we're if we're flooding out at idle maybe our float levels too high or one of our needles isn't seating properly we got the bike back in the shop here a couple things I want to address obviously the carburetors loading up there is one but another is this this throttle I didn't take up any of the slack when I put it together I was kind of rushing to take it for a ride um, the adjustment for that there is one right here but there's also an adjustment on the end of the cable on top of each carburetor here. If you pull that boot up. I didn't take a look as far as the sync goes. Um, synchronization. But I, I think it was pretty close. I'll have to check that. The other thing I want to take a look at is... What was I going to say? I don't know. Anyway, let's pop these carbs off. Oh, I wanted to see how much pull that throttle cable was actually giving when you twist the throttle, because when I gave it full throttle, it didn't feel like it was revving all the way out. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to pop these filters off quick and feel inside when I open that throttle all the way up to see if that slide is lifted all the way up or if it's just partial, because it doesn't feel like they're opening up all the way. It should rev out a lot higher than that. So pop these filters off. We'll take a look. I'm also going to put our battery just on a little trickle charger here. I haven't tested our charging system yet to see if it is going to charge or is charging currently. But I figure I might as well might as well put it on a charger, get some voltage into it. But I'm going to stick the multimeter on it first here. Let's see what we're at just sitting. We're at 12.3, so that's... It's about what we want to see. We'll put it on the charger. Just a little side note, I think it's funny. This battery is identical to the type of batteries we put in stair lifts at work. So most modern stair lifts run on a 12 volt, 8 amp hour AGM battery. Just thought that was kind of funny. We're going to get our carbs pulled off one more time here. See what's going on. Once these carbs are off, I think I'm going to do a compression test just to see where we're sitting. Like I said before, compression does feel good. It does feel even across both cylinders, but I'm just curious what number we're sitting at. Also, I did check to see if the throttle was pulling the slides all the way open, and it is. They also feel like they're synchronized pretty well. What I'm doing is I'm feeling when the bottom edge of the slide reaches the top of the Venturi, you can feel on both cylinders, they hit right about the same time. So these carbs are pretty well in sync as far as that goes, as far as the throttle pull goes. So we're going to pull both carbs apart here, and we'll take a look and see what's going on. It's no wonder we have so much slack in our throttle cable. Our adjusters are backed all the way down. So once we get these carbs pulled apart and cleaned again, then we'll mess with those. These are the plugs I pulled out. We haven't run it long enough to get a good get a good burn on them, but they're pretty wet and at least the the left plug there is gonna be our right hand cylinder. So it's like that if you're sitting on the bike. But it looks like that might have been our problem more so than the left hand cylinder. But maybe I'll burn those off with a torch and um run them again. But right now we're going to do a compression test and see what we're sitting at. I'm hoping for uh, hoping for 120 aside, but we'll see. What do you guys think? Eh, about 115 or so. Not bad. 
Let's try the right hand. And the right side's sitting about 130. 125, 130. That's pretty good. Normally you want to see within about 10 pounds of each other, but that's fine. As long as neither cylinder is under about 90 pounds, it should be good. So that's what we want to see. Gave the left side a few more kicks and it did come up to 120. So that's perfect. That's what we want to see. I think now we're going to get our carbs pulled apart and see if there's anything obvious going on with those. Anyone ever notice that, statistically speaking, if you have both of your arms, you're above average? Anyway, I think I'm going to make a run to Harbor Freight and price some stuff out. I would really love to get a motorcycle lift, but looks like they're up to about 600 bucks now, according to the website. Maybe they have a sale going on or a coupon or something, I don't know. But that would make things a lot easier, especially since I'm going to have to pull this rear wheel off to see why the brakes are are sticking on it and then another thing I haven't addressed yet is our chain has a lot of slack in it and our adjusters are just about all the way out but this one's actually pretty bent I think it's this tab on the swing arm I'll probably have to heat that up and bend it just so we get a straight pull um, which means I'll probably want to pull the rear wheel out I've got to do that anyway for the brakes then we might end up even taking a link out of our chain, just because there's a lot of slop in there. I know you're not supposed to set the set the chain tension with it on the center stand. You're supposed to have a little bit of preload on the on the suspension, but still, there's a lot there. So I'm gonna make a run. I also want to take a look at ultrasonic cleaners. I had one for a while, and it quit working. And I want to see. I want to take a look at the Harbor Freight one and see if it's going to be big enough for just a pair of carburetors would be fine. I don't need much bigger than that. I think that's about all I'm probably going to use it for. Um, otherwise, looking on Amazon, they're not too terribly expensive for about a 10 liter one, which is should be decent size for what I'm going to do. But I'm going to make a run and see what I can see there, and I'll be back. Why do I always end up here? New tool time, back from Harbor Freight and Fleet Farm. Um, bought the ultrasonic cleaner that Harbor Freight had. It was $85. I did get the two-year extended warranty on it. Just because it's Harbor Freight and you never know. It's a no-questions-asked warranty, and I think it was 20 bucks. So if this lasts two years, I'll be impressed. But they'll replace it if it doesn't. So this is just a 2.5 liter it's not very big, but it should be enough to do both of the carbs at the same time. And it is heated, that's kind of cool. So I'm going to get this filled up. I think I'm going to use Berryman's Carb Dip in it. And we'll run those Makunis through it again and see if it makes a difference. Not quite deep enough to cover these carbs all the way, which kind of sucks. But I'll still keep it around. It'll be good for smaller stuff, I guess. So let's fire it up. I've had the heat on, just trying to warm that stuff up a little bit. Timer set. I guess we fire it up. Oh, that's way quieter than the last one I had. Cool. I'll let that run. I might run a cycle, then flip those carbs over, get the other side of them, and we'll see what we have. We ran them through a couple cycles here. I flipped them over. Now I think I'm going to yank them out, give them a rinse, and see what they look like. This is a first for me. I was looking at these needles and seats. I don't know if this is our issue, but it might be. So if you look right there, that's a hairline crack. It doesn't go all the way to the tip, but that might be letting fuel by. I don't know if that would be a big deal if that's if that's what's causing our issue, but that's the first time I've ever seen that. I was just double checking the jetting here, and I think I might have found part of our issue. These are the pilots for the idle circuit. On the left we have a number 30, and on the right it's unmarked, but I suspect it's probably a 25, maybe even smaller than that. I can't find what the stock jetting is on a DS6 online, 
since they weren't a very common bike, the closest thing I can compare it to is like an RD250, which is supposed to have either a 25 or a 27 and a half pilot. So I'll probably put it to RD250 jetting and start with that. Um, these are our mains. These are 110s. On an RD250, the main is supposed to be between a 120 and a 130. So maybe I'll bump those up too. At least these are matching, but these are obviously mismatched. You can tell, you can tell by all the holes in them. I don't know if I can tip them up here, but even the main bore is quite a bit bigger on the 30 than, like I said, I don't know what that one is. I'm thinking it's probably a 25, but I'm going to order a set of 25s and maybe a set of 120s for the mains and start with that but that might be part of our issue why it was loading up as a, a 30 is a pretty big pilot jet especially for just a 250 so that might have something to do with it since we're kind of dead in the water as far as jetting goes for the time being how about we pull this rear wheel off see what's going on with the brakes and see if we can get this adjuster bent first thing i'm going to pop off is our chain then after that, we're going to come over to the other side here. We're going to get our brake cable disconnected, and then there's a brace that goes from the brake drum up to the frame. We're going to just pull that nut off. There's a cotter key that goes through it. Pull that off. Then we're going to pull our axle out, pull this nut off, and then our axle should go through the other side there. And hopefully, I don't think we'll have to actually pull these adjusters out to pull the wheel out once we get that axle all the way through. So, I'm going to put you in the stand and then start with that chain here. Hopefully I can just get it with my needle nose here. There we go. side plate off just like that I don't think I'm gonna pull the chain all the way out sometimes it's kind of tricky to fish it through without pulling that whole front sprocket cover off so I think for now I'm just gonna to try to get it out of the way wouldn't be a bad idea to pull it all the way out and clean it up and like I said earlier I don't know I might actually have to take a full link out of it but We'll see. The sprocket itself doesn't look like it's too worn. The teeth look like they still have some meat on them, so hopefully that'll be okay. Pop that off. The sparing feels okay too. Since I'm pulling the wheel off, maybe I'll try to pack some grease in it. But I think next up is bring it to the other side and we will disconnect our cable and then loosen up our axle. I think I'm going to put the stuff back on the end of the cable so I don't lose it. Actually, let's do the same with that. One last thing we have to worry about. I thought I was going to do our axle, but actually, let's get this cotter key pulled out. I don't know if I'm going to film it, but get our cotter key pulled out and then unbolt this brace down here. That might take a little while, so I'll bring it back.
It's amazing that something that spends its whole life coated in oil still manages to rust out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to save these pipes. Just because they're so thin, I could try to weld on them, but... It was such thin steel to begin with, I don't know if I'll be able to save it. But, we will see. That's a video for another day. Yeah, these pipes are totally rusted out in about four or five different spots. At least on this left side. I don't have time for that right now. In a minute. We got that brace unbolted. Next up is pulling off this axle nut. And hopefully we'll be able to drive the axle out and get the wheel off. That wasn't as tight as I thought it was going to be. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to leave that on there. I'm going to put that nut flush with the end of the axle and give it a couple taps. Get a hold of it on the other side here. There we go. We have a spacer on this side that seems like it doesn't really want to come out. And I don't know what's going on there. Watch the recap and see where that fell out of. This is that spacer I was talking about right there. It seems like it's hung up. I'm gonna try to get on it with my channel locks and see if I can pull it out. Maybe the adjuster has to come out. No, that doesn't make sense. Does this unthread? So that unthreads. I don't have a socket big enough to fit that, so we'll just have to make do here. Interesting design. So that on threads, is that part of the hub then? I already got our axle out. Okay. Let's see if we can tip it or fender stopping us from pulling it out the back. Oh, we're tipping a bike over here. Pick up on the back end a little bit. There we go. This is our brake plate as it would be on the bike. This is that arm that the cable mounts in, pulls on there. As that happens, these shoes expand out and expand into the drum that's built into the hub. Kind of tough to show you with one hand here. Like that, there's a cam that pushes those out. I don't know if these shoes are just so worn out they're getting towards the end of their life. Not sure if it's something that's still available. We have a part number there. Maybe that's something we can look up. It could also be the drum itself is worn, but that would kind of surprise me. I think it's probably these shoes. This might be something I could even bring into our 
brake place and have them relined. So I'm going to try to clean everything up here and then lube these pivot points. Hopefully that helps. I got our adjuster pulled out of the side. Not only is this tab bent, but the adjuster itself is pretty bent. So I'm going to try to put this in the vise, heat it up, see if I can bend it back somewhat straight. And then this, we're going to hit it with the torch, hopefully get some vice grips on it, and then straighten that back out a little bit. Looks like it's just that tab on the end that's bent. It doesn't look like the swing arm itself is bent. It looks like everything else is pretty square. So hopefully that'll straighten things out a little bit. Let's give that a shot. There we go. say that looks pretty good. Ah, shit. Well, I guess we get to play with the hot glue gun today. I decided that frame tab for the adjuster was a project for a different day. So I stripped this backing plate down. I'm wondering if it wasn't this rear brake wasn't sticking. This is our little cam block here that pushes those shoes out. I wonder if it wasn't sticking just because there's so much corrosion on this on either side. I wonder if it was just binding up. Same with the pin where the shoes pivot on the other side. I'm going to clean that up with some emery cloth. The shoes themselves, I looked up that Yamaha part number. I can't find any replacement any type of cross reference. Looks like the previous owner already JP welded these these linings on. They must have come apart when he had it apart, but they're pretty thin, but I'm gonna put it back together. The other possibility is maybe they're just so thin and worn out that we're overextending this cam as we pulled on our brake lever there. If it just stuck too far out and then it was too far to return. It's also possible their springs are a little worn out, but they felt pretty tight, so I think to give it a fighting chance we have to pull our little cam block out here, clean everything up inside, grease it. I want to polish that up the best I can so there's very, very little resistance. Same with that pivot pin on the other side. And then I'll probably even come in here, do the same thing on the shoes, polish those up just to give as little resistance as possible. Then when I put it all back together, I'll hit everything with some anti-seize just to make things move smoothly. It happened again. Why does this keep happening? All right, it's the next day here. We got our brake cam pulled out of our backing plate. We're gonna clean up these surfaces just to give those brakes a fighting chance to actually return like they should. And there's quite a bit of corrosion on them. So I think that might have had something to do with why that brake was sticking. Because it seemed like once you gave it a couple taps or kind of worked that pedal a little bit, then it would return just fine. So I don't know if our springs are worn out. But I think it's just getting hung up because that's so, so rough against those shoes. So we'll get both sides cleaned up here and then see what it looks like. We're going to give the same treatment to our pin on our backing plate here as well as our shoes both ends there. I'll get in there with a brush. Just clean everything up the best we can. Looking at our backing plate here, this cam could also be binding on this surface, as well as our washer there. So we're going to clean those up and then the corresponding edges on our cam. Yeah, everything's ready to go back together. I hit our springs, all our hardware, with a wire wheel just to clean everything up. I'm going to be using the nickel anti-seize as a lubricant. I also make a copper one, I guess. I don't really know the difference, but I've always just used the silver one. So I'll bring you back when we get these together because I might have some choice words with these springs. That went a lot better than I thought I was going to. And it feels like we've got good, good action. Everything's lubricated. doesn't feel like it's sticking anywhere. 
This is the end of our swing arm where this adjuster tab broke off. I'm going to get in here with the flapper wheel, clean up all this old weld, probably bring this over to the uh, to the bench grinder and just square up that end. And I think I'm going to take a magnet, stick it on the end. I've got a couple of magnets, right angle welding magnets, and square that up, tack it, and I think I'm going to preheat the crap out of it so I can get some good penetration there. And then hopefully I won't have to clean it up too much with a grinder. Everything's all cleaned up here. So now we just have to figure out where we want this thing. The ground is going to be in the way. So Goes about like that. Oops, bumped you. Got my helmet on. I think as long as we have the hole lined up with the center of the adjustment slot, we should be good. And then judging off the other side here, this edge is going to be about midway between the thickness of the swing arm. And that'll leave us a good spot to get a good chunk of weld in there. Always make sure you're wearing the proper footwear when welding. Of course I ran out of memory on my phone when I was doing the welding, but there we go. There it is for the whole internet to criticize. Should hold up just fine. It's still square on the swing arm. Like I said, it's not a ton of stress on it, so I'm not, not worried about it breaking. There we go. Next up, since we have the grinder out, I think we're going to take a link out of this chain. I could buy a new one, but... I really don't want to. So we're going to take a link out of that and then hopefully we can get it adjusted. That should give us some more adjustment in our uh, in our rear wheel because they were backed just about all the way out. So let's hack that thing up. This is our brake drum after degreasing and cleaning. And that looks pretty rough in there. I'm going to see if I can hit it with a wire wheel on my angle grinder. Maybe clean some of it up. Hopefully that'll come back a little bit. That drum actually didn't clean up too badly. Hit it with a wire wheel and then some emery cloth. There's a couple low spots in it, but it'll be just fine for a 50 year old bike with 30 horsepower. So I think next we're gonna clean up all of our adjustment hardware, everything on the rear axle, and then we're gonna get this wheel put back on. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for part two of our Yamaha DS6 project. Um, Probably should have should have tried it with that old chain. There was just so much slack in it, and it looked like the adjusters were all the way out on the rear wheel. So I thought our chain was long, but now that I got everything buttoned back up, even with the adjusters backed all the way off, I can't quite get that chain connected. And I'm sure it's probably original anyway. So we'll just order a chain and get that put on. And then our jets are also going to be coming. Everything's coming from Dennis Kirk, which is only about 100 miles from me. So usually I get stuff in two to three business days. Um, I've got plenty of other stuff to work on here, so I'll probably get going on another project. But we will be back with a part three when we get some parts and get some time to work on it. 
As always, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Let me know in the comments. Thanks.